Greg Tepper, Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com here at the THSEA Coaching School and Convention in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. Let's talk some Dallas ISD ball. Let's talk some Vikings football. The head coach, the new head coach of Dallas Pinkston is Coach Derek Lewis. We'll get to why uh, people who are watching may recognize you and recognize <laughs> the name. We'll get to that. First and foremost, congratulations. This is, uh, this is awesome. Thank you. It is awesome. Yeah. What a great opportunity. What's, what's the, you know, it, this came down very recently, you know, very recently. Um, what has the last couple weeks been like for you? Well, it's been a whirlwind, obviously, you know, trying to catch up and uh, make sure we're all on point as far as staff-wise. And, you know, I still haven't met the players. Getting the chance to meet the players and come in the building and set new expectations is going to be great. You know, and, and when you meet these, these, these players, what, what's your message going to be to them? Don't sweat the small stuff. I want us to go out and attack the day. We have to first learn how to compete, mm -hmm. okay? And then secondly, we have to buy into the team atmosphere. Um, I want these guys to, to view themselves as um, coming out and playing hard and seeing exactly what it is that they can do as a team moving forward. You know, Pinkston, it, last year, look, it's, it's been a rough go, yep. right? This is an 0-10 team. This is yep. a, a program that's, that's, that's kind of hit rock bottom, and, yep. and then they're, they're going to give back. How do you, how do you instill? I think, I think winning is contagious. That's my, yep. my opinion. That's true. And I think one win leads to another win leads to another win. How do you infect these kids with winning? You know what I mean? How do you do that? Well, the first thing is is that you got to learn to love the process of winning. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, kids nowadays and, and, and teams nowadays, they want everything manufactured quickly, very mm -hmm. quickly. Um, I'm, I'm come in and I want to talk about the process of winning. I want to talk about the little things that we need to do on a daily basis to go about having an opportunity to be successful on Fridays. And I believe if we can do that, we can start having a culture around mm -hmm. campus that can infect winning. And to me, you know, I look at my uh, playing days. When I was with the St. Louis Rams, we went 4-12. and 12. Then we came back and we won the Super Bowl the, previous, the next year. Um, that happened through work. That happened through guys learning to love the process, learning to get up two days when it hurts a little bit, yeah. learning to get up out of bed at about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and start working out, learning to go out and compete, learning how to hit, learning how to block. All those things, if you take full advantage of process i think you got no problems uh changing the culture well and that's the thing is that there's a lot of programs around here mm -hmm. that have those building blocks in place right because yes, they got that tradition they got that yes sir. that's not the case at pinkston no this is a program that's that's struggled this is a program that 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 needs to build it from the ground up and so i think you're right i think the wins come because you do things the right way you do yes. the little things yes. the right way and if you do those things yes. will take care of themselves exactly and and, and what i'm gonna tell everybody is i'm gonna set high expectations Okay? And um, I want us to try to hit those expectations. But I'm also realistic in the fact that moving forward, we have to build this thing and build it the right way. So I don't want to lower the bar. I want to raise the bar, and I want these guys to have an opportunity to see that if we do X, Y, and Z correctly, we'll have an opportunity to win. And all you get in this world is an opportunity to go out and succeed. So I think, you know, with the expectations set, and with us holding everybody accountable to those expectations, you can go out and have a successful program. And that's what we're trying to build, a program. This is your first head coaching job. Has it, has it sunk in yet? It's yeah. Like you, got it, the, you, got the, you got the gig. It's, you got the big chair. I, I do. I, I, <laughs> it, it actually has sunk in. And um, I feel really good and I feel really confident about moving forward with the people at Pinkston and moving forward with the kids at Pinkston. Brand new school 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, seven and eighth graders in the building with me. I'm very optimistic about the opportunity that I have to be successful at Pinkston and set it up for long-term success, not just one winning season every two or three years. I'm talking about long-term sustaining success. So very excited. I think we can do great things at Pinkston, and I'm looking forward to getting started. So tell me what a Derek Lewis coach team is going to look like. What, you know, when you guys take the – who do you open with? We open with Roosevelt. All right, when you open with Roosevelt – I actually talked to their coach earlier – he was talking mess. He's like, oh, man, Pinkston. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, when, when, when you guys hit the field. Yes, sir. If, 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 if it looks like what you want it to look like, what is this team going to look like schematically? What is it going to look like, you know, attitude-wise? What are they going to look like? I, I'm going to start with attitude-wise. Uh, you are going to get a physical, hard-nosed, disciplined, fundamental football team that believes in what it is that we're teaching 
from snap to whistle. I'm looking for guys that want to finish. I'm looking for guys that can come together and take themselves out of the equation and put themselves into the team. So you're going to get high energy. You're going to get very organized, very prepared, very disciplined football team that's going to go out and win the inches. Mm -hmm. and play the game the way it's supposed to be played. Schematically, I can't tell you that because I haven't met anybody. Okay. Uh, that's, a fair I, that's a fair answer. I, it's a fair answer. I'm going to always be fair with you guys. And, and, and what I want you to know is, is that I'm always going to look to get a schematic advantage to the personnel that I have. I'm going to be multiple in my approach. So if we have to run power 90, 90 times to win a game, we'll run power. If we can spread them out, and dink and dunk it all over the place, we'll dink and dunk it all over the place. If they're vulnerable in the middle, we'll take advantage of them in the middle. So I'm not going to pigeonhole myself, and I'm not going to uh, look at football players as just one-dimensional. We're going to try to have a holistic approach, and we're going to teach these guys how to conceptualize an entire field. On defense, uh, like, again, I don't know, if we're heavy uh, yep. defensive line-wise, then we might be a 4-3. If we like defensive line-wise, we'll be a 3-4. So it's all up. So you're saying, you know, we hear coaches all the time say, oh, yeah, we're, we fit scheme to personnel and stuff like that. You're saying, I'm going to walk in, I'm going to take I'm gonna take kind of stock of what we got, and then we're going to figure it out, what works best. Yes, because yeah. uh, to me, um, let, I, I watch guys all the time, and even when I was in college, I watch teams, and I try to project as a recruiter. Mm -hmm. And I look at teams, and I'm like, is this a spread running back and – Sometimes you have to project it. Mm -hmm. Is this a power running back? Sometimes you have to project it. I believe to give kids the best chance possible, why don't you showcase their abilities mm -hmm. instead of worry about the scheme? I believe that, you know, my experiences in college, you know, bring, brings me better equipped and more prepared to teach a variety of schemes. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Well, we're excited. And, and I'll, you know, the one thing I'll tell you is, is I, I feel like people here like Dallas ISD, they're like, oh, okay, fine, Dallas ISD football. The thing for me, and, and, and you look at what you're going to be up against in your mm -hmm. district, it's a good district, a, yeah. lot, a lot of really good coaches. Yeah. I, I think that some of the coaching that goes on in Dallas ISD, really high quality, yeah. really good coaching, and, and in a lot of respects, yeah, your kids got to go out there and compete. Yeah. You're competing too. Yeah. You're competing with that guy, that staff on the other side of the sure. field too. And, and it feels like, you, you know, you guys are, are going to stack up against some good coaches that you're going to, you know. Yeah, you're gonna need to, to to win that game too. Yeah, and you know, not not taking away anything away from the preparation side, sure. uh, from a coaching coaching standpoint, uh, Dallas ISD is pretty stacked with mm -hmm. good coaches, mm -hmm. and um, Troy Matthews coming in being an AD is done doing a terrific job of getting more and more coaches in the district to make this thing competitive. Man, I I, I really believe, man, it's been an underrated uh, district as far as coaching and scheme wise for a number of years now. You look at what Coach Samples did at Skyline, man. That's Mm -hmm. Those are those are no small feats. So I think you know with with with, with the ability to to have an influx of guys coming in and uh, you know continuing the, that tradition, I think it'd be a great district, man. Hey Max, I'm going to ask him a loaded question. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You're a Louisiana guy. Sure. Compare and contrast Texas high school football and Louisiana high school football. Per capita, Louisiana has. Great athletes, mm -hmm. not good ones, great ones, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. When you come to Texas, you have a bevy of great athletes and you have a bevy of good athletes. The difference, the biggest difference between Louisiana and Texas football is the abundance, mm -hmm. the amount of love and passion that takes place uh, from the people around it, this convention. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing the storylines that you can come with from a player and a team and a coaching staff out of the state of Texas. Um, in New Orleans, in Louisiana, not so much. Mm -hmm. But no. now, I, I say, you know, being a Louisiana boy, comparable when you get on the field now. Yeah. The, the it, it, there, there, there's some good, some good ball played in Louisiana. The athletes can ball now. Absolutely. Now, let's address the, the Longhorn in the room. Okay. Um, okay. You know, I'm looking, I'm looking at this. You know, look, Come I'm on, looking man. at the Dallas Morning News over here. They got, the, they, got the, got. they got the story here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Derek Lewis about – his famous catch at UT, folks, yeah. folks who know you, who know that that they, they they know you for that famous catch for fourth and inches sure. uh, against Nebraska. Sure. Um, I don't want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is you're still a young man. Max, are you hearing this man? He don't want to talk about. I don't want to talk about he that. He led into he led into that, and now he doesn't want to talk right, about. Well, it. fine, 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 fine. Tell us. Okay, are you? Do you ever? Do you ever get sick of talking about that catch? No. Never. 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 Ever, so somebody comes up to you three in the morning and be like, "Hey, Derek, tell me about the catch." Love to talk about it. Tell me about the catch. Okay. So <laughs> here we go. It, 
the, the week of the game, this, uh-huh. this is no, 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 no crap. The week of the game, okay, um, Coach McAvig is designing this play, and he's talking to James, and he's like, hey, you know, fourth and inches, roll left. They'll never see it, James. They'll never think about a quarter, right-handed quarterback rolling left. And then, you know, I go out on the pass to finish the, the compliment of the concept up, and uh, Coach McAvig looks over to James, and he said, I saw him point out there, and uh, I came back to the huddle, and uh, I asked James, I said, so what did he say? Never to throw it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Never to throw it to you. There's no chance. There's no chance. <laughs> so it's ironic that in the game, I think James had just scrambled for about 30 yards or so. Um, he comes in the huddle and he said, hey, man, heads up. If the safety comes up, I'm throwing it to you. I said, what? I thought by that time we are already on the line of scrimmage. The ball is being snapped. I looked up and he throws the softest mm-hmm. tissue paper pass I've ever seen in my life. It took almost forever to come down. Caught it, and the rest is history. The rest is history. See, that didn't hurt, did it? No, now you're part. You of, you're, and there you're part go. of UT lore. There you're you part. Go, you're part of the, the, the you fabric. There the fabric go. along along on football. Now, the uh, uh, the only thing is, you know, because there's some people mm-hmm. that like, you know, you're famous for one play and stuff sure. like that. And yeah. every time they get asked about the same play, I don't yeah. want to talk about this, you know. And and it, that's it's good that you don't. You should embrace it. That's Listen. awesome. You got you, you ought to be famous for something. Absolutely. So I'm for, not famous for anything. For people for people that, that run away from what it is that they've done well, I think they've really got a serious problem. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Now, I do want to follow up on the other question I had, which is you're still a young man. Yes, sir. When you get these kids out here, are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna line up and run against them? Can you can you you think you pretty sure you can beat some some of the kids? We're gonna compete at a high level in everything we do. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> does that mean does that mean trying to beat coach? Yeah, you know, uh, we're going to compete at a high level <laughs> in everything that we do. And uh, I, I think at times, man, you know, they might see coach making an appearance. I, I, I can definitely demonstrate. Okay. Now, I don't know how That's long good. I can, but I can demonstrate definitely. <laughs> coach pulling up a hammy. <laughs> Let's go to the Dick Sporting Goods Wheel of Questions. Okay. The Dick Sporting okay. Goods Wheel of Questions okay. with Derek Lewis of Dallas Pinkston. There's nothing on here that's going to get you fired. Okay. But okay. whatever you land on, you got to answer. Okay. Deal? Deal. Give this thing a spin. DickSportingGoods.com sponsoring it. Man, see, you know he's a former player because that's a strong spin. It's that's a strong spin. Compete in everything you do. Is it okay I, I root big bucks, no whammies? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> big bucks, no whammies. Big bucks, no whammies. Let's see what we're going to get. All right. Now, this is interesting. I'm coming to a Pinkston game. Yep. Do you know yet where I should eat before the game? I do not. You don't? Mm-mm. Okay. Before this, you were an assistant at, help me, Aldine, Aldine, Aldine Davis. Aldine Davis. Benjamin Davis. Benjamin yes, Davis. That's right. If I was going to a Davis game, where do I eat before the game? Fud Ruckers. Man, really? Yep. Ooh. I'm simple and plain. You're a simple and plain guy. All right, Fud then Ruckers. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go off the board and I'm going to ask you another question on there. Yep. I'm coming over to dinner at your house. Oh. So now you started. See, so you got person. <clears throat> Let me slide my chair over. All right. What are you cooking? Uh, do you like spice? Oh, oh yeah. You spicy guy. I'm a spicy guy. Okay. Well, I, I cooked this dish, uh, crawfish pasta. It's pretty good. Max. Me being a New Orleans native, it's pretty good. Oh, I, I see, here's the, here's the problem. You just said the magic word to Max. Max is a New Orleans stan. Well, Max, let's get it started, man. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it, is, it is Derek Lewis, the new head coach of the Pinkston Vikings. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. We Thank are you, so brother. looking forward to seeing your squad. I cannot wait. Thank you. And you guys, I appreciate you guys, man. It's a straight institution in the state of Texas, and I love working with you guys. We appreciate it.